Now we've got word problems that are different from most of the word problems you've seen before. And these are applications of function behavior, not just functions, but function behavior, which of course is all this stuff, okay? Okay, topics and function behavior. A daycare center. Now, get ready for stuff to be different. A daycare center has 30 feet of dividers with which to enclose a rectangular play space in a corner of a large room. So they're going to make a play space. They're going to make a rectangular play space with these dividers. The sides against the wall require no partition. OK, that means you don't have to use the dividers against the wall. The wall. Is just is is perfect. But the sides that are not against walls are going to require partitions. So this is what they're talking about. They have a wall. Let me make this a little thick. Oh, I know what to do. Never mind. They have, this is a big room, right? It's a big room. So we can draw a big room. And there are all these little kids screaming and yelling. Okay, that's best I can do. Now, somebody, maybe a donor, gives them a partition, a bunch of partitions. They have, in fact, 30 feet of dividers, which are partitions. Let's make them blue. And what they want to do is they want to set up a rectangular play space in the corner here. So the blue things are the dividers and the black things are the walls that are already there. And this is how they want to set it up. Maybe put all the little, little math geniuses in here. Okay, so we're going to do these things. Okay, now it's telling us stuff. No, we got to pay attention. The sides against the wall require no partitions. We've already settled that. Suppose the play space is X feet long. Answer the following questions. So the length is the longest side. That means this is going to be X feet long. And we're going to have to answer the questions. So here's question A. Find a function that describes the area of the play space in terms of X. OK. So we have 30 feet of dividers all together. Now, this is the length. And this is the width. And as we know, area. Equals length times width. But we got to write this thing as a function in terms of x. That means we have to have the length and the width in terms of x. Well, the length is already 
in terms of x. We're told that the length is x, but what about the width? Well, we've got 30 feet altogether, right? If x feet are being used for the length, then 30 minus x feet are going to be used for the width because there are 30 altogether. X of them are being used for the length. So this is the leftovers. So what that means is we can still say length times width. Length is X and width is 30 minus X. And that's the answer to part A. That's the way they want you to answer. They don't want you to work it out. They just want it raw. X times 30 minus X. And that's what A of X equals. In fact, I should erase that. What they do, you know, is with the answer box. And so what you'll see is A of X equals, and then there's an answer box. In which you're going to write X times 30 minus X. Only they change the number 30 around. I've seen 27, 24, different numbers. Here is something that was entirely new to me. I've never seen the question about domain asked about a word problem. I mean, it's customary to be asked, what is the domain of f of x? But here's a word problem, and we're being asked, what is the domain of a of x? So we have to talk this one out. I'm just going to go in here. B. Domain. Of. A of X, which equals X times 30 minus X. Domain exists in real life. Um, it's, it signifies the limits on everything. OK, there are always limits. You don't have Limitless dividers. You only have 30 feet. OK, so in real life, when you're talking about domain, you're asking what would make, well, in, the, in this case, a play space. What would make the play space what would make the play space not a play space in other words what numbers would you put in for X that would make make this not exist? Well, for sure, if X were zero, that would be totally meaningless, wouldn't it? X can't be zero. 
That's the length. If the length is zero, then you haven't even started to put the play space together yet. So if X is zero, no play space. And for that matter, if the width were zero, that would mean no play space. I mean, what, you'd have all your dividers flat against this wall over here. You couldn't stick a kid in there. He would be very unhappy and go home and tell his mommy. All right, so we also have to make sure that 30 minus X does not equal zero, because there would not be a play space. Well, if 30 minus X, if it were zero, what would X be? Let's solve for X. I'm gonna add X to both sides of the equation. You don't have to do it that way. You could subtract 30. But I'm just moving X over here so that I'll automatically have an X here and a 30 here. So that means if X equals 30. No play space. Yeah, if, if, which is like saying, okay, if the length is all 30, then you'd have all these dividers sticking out here and nothing going in there to be the width. Kids would just run in and out, in and out. So now we know, okay, okay, okay. X cannot equal zero. X cannot equal 30, but X can equal everything in between. Now, admittedly, if X were only one foot, you'd have a really skinny play space, but you would have a play space. So, the answer to B Where can I write this? The answer to B is this. The domain of this is all the, all the numbers X could equal between zero and 30, but not zero and not 30. So that's what your domain would be. Now C. Let's talk about the graph of the function. For C, A of X equals X times 30 minus X. Well, if we go ahead and we multiply it all together, we'll have 30 X minus X squared. And that's going to equal negative X squared plus 30x. That's a cup down parabola. 
So the graph would look like that. You'd have a Y axis and an X axis. And this, that point right there, would be 30. X equals 30. And this would be X equals zero right there. And here's the domain. So how you would describe this if you were describing it in words would be cup down parabola. And if we go back up here, give the dimensions of the play space, that is the length and the width, that would yield the maximum area. Well, your length is how long does the length need to be? And the maximum area is gonna be your K. So this is your maximum area. And this is the length that will make the maximum area, that will make the area be a maximum. Okay. So, yeah, so C, describe the graph. That's what the graph will look like. Actually, you'll be given four different graphs and you choose the right one. This is the only right one. Correct one. And D give the dimensions of the play space that yield the maximum area. Okay. That means find the length and find the width. Find length and width that will give the maximum area. OK, well, to do this, we need to find H and find K. You always find H first. H equals negative B over 2A. And here, here we have negative 1 X squared plus 30. So 30 is B. We'll have negative 30 over 2 times negative 1. That's 15. Now this is the length that will cause the area to be a maximum. Give the kiddos the biggest space they can, given they only have 30 feet of dividers. That's the length that will maximize. Maximize area. OK, we're not being asked for the maximum area. We're being asked for the dimensions that will create the maximum area. So now we have to find the width. Well, that equals 30 minus X. 
and x equals 15, so 30 minus 15, and that's 15. So what they're telling us is that we haven't drawn this correctly. Instead, it's going to be 15 feet long and 15 feet wide. It's going to be a square play space, which is true. The way to maximize any area is to make it a square or a circle. This is the last problem. Same kind, little more difficult. So I thought it would be better for all of us if I worked this for you. Yes, so it's on the video, for instance. Here's what it says. From a 27 centimeter by 27 centimeter piece of cardboard square corners are cut out and then the sides are folded up so that you get this box a box that doesn't have a top on it the kind of box my cats love So it says complete parts A through C below. Express the volume of the box as a function of X. Well, we need to talk about volume. They're not asking for the area of the base. They're asking for the volume. Volume is how much stuff your uh, box will hold. Okay, the formula for volume is length times width times height. Okay, well, let's look at this then. We're talking about the base of the box this length times this width and then x is the height that's that's what gets folded up so that's how tall your your box will be um this used to be 27 centimeters But the base of the box is not going to be 27 centimeters because this much got cut out and this much got cut out and the sides were folded up. So this side of the box and this side of the box started off as 27 centimeters, but then X centimeters were eliminated and X centimeters were eliminated, which makes it shorter now. The length, well, the length, this side of the box is going to be 27 minus 2X. Now, because this started out as a square, 27 centimeters on a side, this side of the box is also going to be 27 minus 2x, which I can't write sideways with this, I don't think. 27 minus 2x, well, that's not too bad. So now we've got a length and a width. Woo, -hoo -hoo. okay. 
27 minus 2x times 27 minus 2x. Make that bigger minus, yeah. And then the height, the amount that gets folded up, that's what that length is right here. So that's x. And that makes this v of x. Now, quite honestly, it's always easier if you put this lonely little term in front. So we're going to let our answer to this, excuse me, answer to this be x times 27 minus 2x times 27 minus 2x. That's the answer to A. Now the answer to B is just the same as before. When, when you apply domain to a more real life situation, um, you have to ask yourself, well, what would make, what would make that V of X, what would make it not a box? Well, what would make it not a box is if X equals zero, If the height were zero, it wouldn't be much of a box. And if the length and width were zero, that wouldn't be much of a box. So 27 minus 2x will not be a box either if this side is zero or if this side is zero. And since they're identical, I really don't have to write them two times. So let's come down here and do B. If X is zero, it's not going to be a box, so X cannot equal zero. And if 27 minus 2X equals zero, it's not going to be a box. So let's solve for X here. I'll add 2X to both sides. So 27 equals 2x divided by 2 divided by 2 and they actually let you use a decimal for the answer here 13.5. Half of 27 is 13 and a half. So X cannot equal that or the length and the width will be zero. Can't have that. So the domain, the X's you're allowed to consider to use is going to be not zero, and not 13.5, but everything in between. I don't like that. I really didn't need that much room for a comma, 13.5. Now it says use the graph, and this is the graph that they give you. Okay. Use the graph of the function 
to determine the dimensions, the length, width, and height, that yield a maximum volume. So I wanted you to see the original graph. Here's the original graph. Now the domain though, is from X equals zero to X equals 13 and a half. Notice it's not a parabola. It's not, it's not symmetric. That happens in real life. That's because we have a cubic here. We have a cubic. There's an X, there's an X, there's an X, X times X times X is X to the third. So your, your leading term, I don't know what the coefficient would be, but your leading term would be an, a, a, a third degree term. Okay, so that means that only this part of the graph is going to be used because this is the domain right here. Now they are so nice. They give us the H and K. So we don't have to drive ourselves crazy looking for it. H is 4.5. That's the X, the X that will maximize the volume. And K is 1458. 1,458 cubic centimeters. Yes, cubic centimeters. Volume is in cubic centimeters, cubic inches, cubic feet. Like that. Okay, well this H is really an X. So here's what we know. We've got length of the box, because we're asking about volume. Length of box. And we know that's 27 minus 2x. And we've got the width of the box. And that's 27 minus 2x. And we've got the height of the box. And that's X. So the X that will maximize the volume is 4.5. Four point five centimeters. Because they said, OK. Now all I have to do is put four point five in there and there. So twenty seven. Minus two times four point five. And twenty seven. Minus two. Times four. Point five. That's four point five also. There. There now. Well, two times four point five is nine. So this is 27 minus 9, which is 18. So 18 centimeters. Centimeters, not meters. Same thing here, 18 centimeters. 
So your box is going to be 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters by 4.5. centimeters and that will maximize your volume. And that's it.